Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thanks so much for watching. Today I'm playing with new Lisa Eldridge lipsticks and eyeshadows. I was so excited when I heard that Lisa was not just launching five new velvet lipsticks, but she was also releasing a brand new product, an eyeshadow palette. And I was like, oh, yes. Okay, so I picked up all five. Normally I wouldn't do that. I would pick the ones that I feel like I would use the color stories the most, but I needed to know. One of my favorite things about Lisa's makeup line is the packaging. The packaging is just supreme. I don't feel like there's any other packaging that gets me every time like this. There's a lot of luxe packaging out there. This is just luxe enough while being minimalist that it's perfect. So I love, first of all, the size. It, it's, it's not too big, it's not too bulky, it's not too heavy. Um, it easily opens right here. There's no snap closure. It's a magnetic closure. It has a nice mirror in it. And there's only six eyeshadows. Okay, you wanna put a little icing on this cake? See all these little holes here in the back? You can take them out. They're refillable. If you run through one shade and it's your favorite, you don't have to buy the whole palette again. You can just get that one shade and replace it. Or if you want to build your own custom palette, guess what? You can. So I always feel like she does it right, and I really love this. And I feel like even the pan size is a good size for getting a brush into. So I'm just gonna start with this kind of light and neutral brown here. This is one of the seamless mattes, so this is more of a powder formula with just a little bit of pearl in it. Um, and, and not so much to make it shiny, but to make it skin-like and blend. I was thinking about it, and I don't think I'm gonna do an eye look with every single eyeshadow palette today. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of cherry pick and then I'm gonna do a video featuring each one individually. That'd probably be the easiest for me and really give you an opportunity to see them in action, but also just to kind of get the idea of how these guys are working. From here, I was thinking, I could keep going here, I might dip back into this, but this is one of the palettes that intimidated me the most and also caught my fancy the most, and it's this one. This one's called Sorcery. And it's really kind of like, this duochrome shade and these kind of gunky metallics. I'm super excited about this. I'm gonna go into this shade right here. One of the things that I'm really excited to see is that Lisa mentioned that there's no fallout with these. And I'm always like, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> but so far I really feel like, you know, I'm getting a nice blend and really taking the time to, you know, blend these out and I don't, I don't have any fallout. We'll see what happens with the sparkles, but certain matte formulas can be, you know, formulated in a way that if you pick up too much on your brush or too much on your finger, well, then there's stuff everywhere. And so far, I'm really liking the way this is going. I have been eyeballing this shade right here. This one's called Magical. Oh, I love kind of like a really golden, but still kind of murky green tone. This is really pretty. This is the shade that I'm working with right now. This is a duochrome, it's called Mercurial, and it can look a little gold, but also a little blue, depending on how the light hits it, which I think is interesting. I'm gonna go back into that first matte shade from the Cinnabar palette, and I'm just gonna kind of blend where the lid color meets that crease color. I feel like these layer over the top of each other really well. I do like that. I'm also gonna pick up this darkest matte in here. This one's called Fired Earth. And I want just a little bit more darkness right out here. I don't want a lot, just a little. I'm running into just a little bit of fallout. I mean, it's hardly any at all, but I feel like that mercurial shade did kind of leave me with a little bit extra. And I think that maybe if I had my face fully powdered, it would whisk away easily, or if I had more of an eyeshadow primer and I'm not wearing anything, so my eyelids aren't, they're not like primed and ready for something to kind of stick to them and not budge. But I did, I did have just a little bit of fallout. I'm picking up that first matte brown shade on kind of like a buffing brush, and I'm taking it underneath the eye. I'm also grabbing just a little bit of that dark brown matte shade right for the lower lash line. I really don't want this to get too heavy today. I'm sure these could really build up, but I'm, I'm wanting to keep the eye look a little bit light since I'm gonna be putting on a wide range of lipstick shades and I don't want it to be too incongruous. 
I was thinking about putting on actual liner and I was like, mm, let's just use what we have here in the eyeshadow pans. I do that a lot, especially when I'm running out the door quickly and I don't wanna reach for one more thing. For my inner corner, I'm gonna pull in this shade here. This one's called Mage. I'm gonna throw on some mascara and I'll be right back. I'm gonna put the lipsticks on for you next and then I will swatch lipsticks as well as complete eyeshadow palettes at the end. This is the lipstick that sold out in no time flat. This is Velvet Sorcery. This is Velvet Sorcery. I blotted it and then I used my finger to blend it. I feel like this is one of those shades that is gonna suit a ton of people. And just like the rest of Lisa's True Velvet lipsticks, it's not dry, it doesn't tug, it doesn't pull going on, it glides going on, and it feels very comfortable and lightweight on the lips. This is Velvet Sorcery built up to its full opacity. I think this is a gorgeous shade, but I would probably wear it most frequently with a much lighter eye. This is Velvet Rain. This is a gorgeous shade. I think what I like most about this is its balance. It's not too cool toned like a mauve shade leaning a little bit you know, purpley, and it's not too pink leaning kind of like Barbie pink. It's somewhere in the middle. It's got some nice warmth to it, but I also feel like it's not too warm. It's super pretty, very, very wearable. I'm gonna throw on another layer. This is a sort of pink lip, especially when it's blotted, that really reminds me of the pink that I had seen in old portraits. The sorts of portraits that you would find in fine art museums or in portrait galleries in those big old European homes where they just have like all of the ancestors up on the wall. I definitely see this as a sort of pink lip that is just a little bit, not too much, especially when it's blotted, but full on like this, absolutely stunning. And I like that it's it's not too cool, it's not too warm, it's right in the middle. Mm. This is Velvet Pompadour. This is one light layer of Velvet Pompadour blurred out with my finger. This is a gorgeous pink. Not all pink lipsticks look good on my skin tone. I feel like there's a lot of pinks out there that I just don't get along with. But I love all of Lisa's pinks and they all work really well. So I'm gonna throw another layer on, kind of build this up all the way up to as bold as it can be. I really like this lipstick. I could see myself kind of sharing this out with a little bit of her elevated glow for like a glowy cheek. I, I love this. This is absolutely stunning. I feel like this is the right type of pink for my personal preference. I tend to go more for um, slightly brighter or, or warmer pinks. Um, the minute it gets to be too cool toned and, and look too like Barbie pink, it doesn't always work on my complexion. Or if it gets too light and too milky, also something that I don't reach for. But this is just right there where it's bright, where it's bold, but it has a little bit of warmth to it. It's not too blue toned. It, it's, I don't know, there's something beautiful about this. And those slight subtleties that Lisa adds to each of her colors makes them so wearable. And it also really reminds me of this pink velvet pouch. Um, this is something she was giving to people making a purchase of three items or more, but I think I have all of Lisa's bags, even the linen one from many, many moons ago, but this is a fabulous lipstick. This is Velvet Enchantment. This is Velvet Enchantment. It's kind of described as a a fairy tale red, sort of the, the red lipstick that you would see, you know, on a heroine's lips with a red without being too much, just enough. And I, I really feel like this does bring that just enough, not too much. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous lipstick shade. I'm gonna put another layer on and see what we get. I love this. This is, this is really that easy to wear red. It's gonna go with a lot of things. It does have some warmth to it, but it's not really kind of like a, terracotta or an orangey red. And it does have some coolness to it. I feel like it's a really nice balance. I feel like it's really easy to wear and it looks pretty as a light layer as well as completely built up. The last lipstick I have to try on is Velvet Duchess. This is the one that my heart was just like, oh, so excited for when I saw she was launching a new red. This is a really pretty, it's halfway between, she says, Velvet Ribbon which is her classic kind of neutral red and velvet jazz, which is a much deeper um, 1920s style red. This is kind of halfway between the two. This is a really thin blurred out layer of Velvet Duchess. It is very pigmented. 
Um, I'm excited to see what another like full on complete opaque layer looks like. Look how rich and intense this is. Full on completely opaque, it's stunning. This is one of those lipsticks though that is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> I feel like um, if you love a bold lipstick and a real attention grabbing one, Duchess would be perfect. I just threw on a combo of Velvet Sorcery and Velvet Enchantment to kind of get this look, and I threw on a little bit of the Enchantment lipstick as a blush, but let's do some swatches. Here are all the lipsticks. I did a full swatch, and then I kind of pulled it down so you could see what they would look like if they were blurred or slightly worn down. Velvet Sorcery, Velvet Rain, Velvet Pompadour, Velvet Enchantment, and Velvet Duchess. I really feel like you can see, especially in these swatches, you know, as they're pulled down a little bit here, that we have a lot of um, warmth in this one. This one's kind of like a warm pink. And um, Velvet Enchantment has a lot of brown in it as a kind of more wearable red. I think that's kind of what helps it out. This one definitely has some berry tones in it, and this one is very much a decidedly brown with a slightly rosy lean. Um, I feel like these are really beautiful colors, and I think that four out of the five of these are going to be super easy to wear and if you are a red lipstick lover you'd probably really like duchess this is the cinnabar eyeshadow palette here are those swatches for you this one here is very much a topper shade but these metallics here they can get so pigmented this is a really gorgeous warm neutrals if you are a warm neutrals lover you've got a really nice range of dark but not black you know mid-toned a lighter brown um, two really pretty super sparkly shades and a nice topper. I think this is probably going to be the one that I reach for a lot because I am a warm neutrals kind of gal. This is the Sorcery eyeshadow palette. Here are those swatches. This is a duochrome shade. You can see how it kind of goes kind of gold and kind of bluey purple. Um, the rest of these here are just metallics, and this is a seamless matte. Most of what I'm wearing on my eyes today comes from this eyeshadow palette. This is the eyeshadow palette in Vega. This has a much cooler color story to it. This is the only matte in here that has that kind of creamy feel. It's the velvet texture. And then the other three matte mattes are seamless mattes. This one here is a luminous duochrome, and this one is just a metallic, but they are Done. Oh my goodness, I'm usually not a cool eyeshadow kind of gal. I'm trying to lean into that a little bit more, but I'll tell you it's the grays and the blacks that make me worried, but I feel like this is going to be fantastic because this black is not like instant black. This is buildable black, and that's usually where I get in trouble. I end up looking like I got punched in the eye, but oh, and, and this right here, this is screaming at me. This plus this for an easy, like, out the door look in no time flat. This eyeshadow palette is Muse. It's more on the rosy, warm side of things. This eyeshadow palette only has velvet mattes in there, so they have more of that creamy feel to them. We do have the single luster in the collection is in this palette. We have a luminous duochrome and a metallic as well. But this is a really pretty, super wearable, probably another one that I will get a ton of use out of. This last eyeshadow palette here is the one in Myth. This one is absolutely beautiful, but these shades are the ones that, that give me a little moment of pause. I don't always look the best in purple or mauve eyeshadows, but I definitely wanted to try this. This is a really interesting shade. I thought it was going to be more black leaning, but it's like a blackened plum, almost like a deep eggplant. This is a very sparkly top coat, and this shade right here is so pretty. It looked a little bit more almost lavendery gray, and it reads a little bit more gray on my skin tone. This right here is screaming for a one shadow look. <laughs> Love this shade. And these two are the ones that I'll probably use with a little bit more caution. They are the sort of shades that I'm not used to placing on my eye. This one here really reminds me of the lipstick in Velvet Myth. As I was putting together this video for today, I was thinking about how best to do it. I knew I wanted to give you swatches of everything, of all the lipsticks, as well as the eyeshadows, but I knew I probably only wanted to do one eye look. And I was gonna, you know, kind of cherry pick from all the shadows 
and um, I really like the look that I came up with, but expect to see the rest of these in use in a dedicated video. My goal is to do um, several videos for using each one of these individually. That way you'll get a good idea of what each palette is capable of doing on its own. I'm also probably gonna take the time to like rearrange one of these guys and create kind of like my ideal palette, like my six favorite shades. And I love that you can do that. When I was looking at making purchases, I almost got just a bunch of singles, but I didn't do it because there wasn't just a single empty eyeshadow palette, like just the component to be able to put my shadows in, which is why I leaned into buying one of each. That way I had all the shades, I had all the formulas, and then I had places to house them. I love that she's selling singles already. I know a lot of times other brands will make packaging refillable, but they won't put the refills out for a while because they want you to buy the whole component. And I think it's great that you can get just the singles that you want, but I really would have loved to have seen these little components, just the packaging available to be able to put your shadows in. I do think it's likely that we'll see just the empty palettes in the future, so you can build your own. I think that's super smart to do. As I was putting on this look today, a couple of things came to mind. That the velvet mattes and the seamless mattes, they blend with no effort at all. Um, part of it could be the brushes that I'm using. I was using rougher brushes today and some Sonia G brushes, but I'm definitely gonna try these with um, synthetic brushes as well. I feel like even the velvet matte formula, the one that's a little creamier, might actually do better with a synthetic brush. I know that Lisa released a whole line of brushes to go with these, and I have so many eye brushes. I I didn't want to pick up anything new, but all of her brushes seem to be synthetic and they might work best with this formula. So I'm going to give these a go with synthetic brushes as well. The other thing that I really like about this is although we have some really pretty sparkle, it definitely feels like it's a grown up sparkle, like it's a beautiful luster on the lid where it's not too much and it's just enough. These metallic shades, these luster shades, the kind of luminous duochromes, all of the sparkly ones, they look good on an older eyelid. I'm gonna be 48 in two months and my eyelid is not the same as my 14 year old daughter's. <laughs> she looks good in anything, in any formula, by anybody, and I don't anymore. It has to be the specific type of formula and there's a lot of eyeshadows I don't reach for anymore because all it does is make my eyelid look dry and like craggly. These are really beautiful. I do think there's a little bit of fallout with these and I, it could be that because I didn't put an eyeshadow primer down, there was nothing for these to adhere to. I didn't find that with either the seamless matte or the velvet matte, but more with the metallics, with the duochromes. And I feel like it has more to do with the fact that maybe I picked up too much on my finger. And I don't have like a lot of sparkle and I feel like I was able to get rid of it and it wasn't a problem. But I, I do feel like there is just a hair of potential for fallout. It could have been my application technique. It could have been that I didn't have any primer down, or if you are a superstar makeup artist like Lisa, you're never gonna have fallout. But I do feel like there is just a little bit of that. The other thing that I really like about these is that they build beautifully over the top of themselves and they're not crazy pigmented. They give you a, a choice. Like sometimes I will pick up a brush, I will put it in an eyeshadow, and the minute I touch it down, like boom, it's way too much pigment, it's a lot. I feel like these would really be beginner friendly, that they would allow you to build to the intensity that you want without it being like an instant commitment the first time you touch a brush or your finger to your eyelid. And I think that is really, really fantastic. I also feel that they layer nicely on top of each other so you can get like a variety of looks depending on what you tap in the center of the lid. Or if you wanna blend a little color with something else over the top, you're not gonna lose them. They're not gonna get really too muddy. I feel like they do stay distinct, but they layer well. And you do have your choice of intensity based on how much you put on. I'm a little split on the price of these because they're $68 a piece. That's a lot. They're almost $70 each. Okay, so when I say it out loud, I'm like, whoa, that's a lot. But then I have to remind myself, the type of makeup that I prefer, I prefer a smaller eyeshadow palette. The minute you give me more than six or nine shades, I get a little like, ooh, squirrel, ooh, shiny, and I get distracted and I don't know what to do. So for me, six is perfect. I also like how small it is. I feel like it's just the right size. It's not too dinky, it's not too large. They're beautiful. And then on top of that, the fact that you can like refill them, I think there's a good chance I'm gonna run out of this shade or I'm gonna run out of this shade. And then when I'm out of it, a lot of other eyeshadow palettes, you'd have to buy that entire palette again to get that shade. What's beautiful about these is you can just push that one shade out, 
buy the refill, boop, keep going. Because these are so pricey at $68 a piece, almost $70, my recommendation to you would not to be to get all five. Um, to look at the color stories and to really think about which one you would use the most. And think of it as your daily indulgent. That's how I, always I think of Lisa's lipsticks. They're $36, they're kind of expensive, and I wouldn't want you to feel like you need to have all of them, but which one or two would you wear and it could be your daily luxury? That's really how I see Lisa's brand because yes, it is expensive. Yes, it is more than a lot of other stuff, but the experience is worth it. The formulations are beautiful and I haven't tried a single thing from Lisa that I haven't liked. Now with the lipsticks, I have so many of these, like I have so many, <laughs> but I really feel lipstick is my favorite thing. I feel like I could probably very easily get rid of the rest of my lipstick collection and just stick with Lisa's lipsticks and be happy for the rest of my days. Now, am I gonna do that? No, but I really do feel like they're worth that $36 price point because not only are they comfortable matte lipsticks, they wear really well, easy to apply over themselves. Like they do everything I want a matte lipstick to do. Thank you so much for watching today. Keep an eye out for those upcoming videos where I try on each eyeshadow individually. I'll probably also do a comparison of all the lipsticks um, with other lipsticks that are in that shade, just so that you can see which ones are kind of close. If you're thinking, do I need this new shade? Is it close to something I already have? I'll probably have that coming up pretty soon too. I would love to know what your favorite Lisa Eldridge products are. Do you have a favorite shade? Is there a formula that you swear by? Let me know in the comment section down below. Have a fantastic day and I will see you again soon.